Hi guys, this is Mrs. Allison. Today we are going to continue our discussion on exponential growth and decay. And today we're gonna to focus on decay. Before we get started, let's review our basic exponential function that we're going to look at. We know that an exponential function is one where the exponent is a variable. We can't have anything other than an exponent that's a variable. And we know that our a value, the a value that we have listed here, represents the what? Do you remember from yesterday? The initial value. This is our starting point. And then our b value that we have the B value that we have is what we call our growth or our decay factor. Typically, we actually just call it a growth factor, even if it represents decay, um, but it is a growth or decay factor. So yesterday, we focused on the idea of growth, and we said that if B is greater than 1, it means it's growth. So then what do you think it means to be decay? How do you think we can look at an equation and know it's decay? Well, if our b is less than one, but greater than zero, this represents decay. So decay happens when b is between zero and one. So let's start by looking at graphs of decay functions, and they're going to look a little bit different than the a times the b to the x. Um, those are more for the modeling, but the, the same ideas hold true. Okay, so we talked yesterday about what it looks like to look at our parent function, and we know graphing has everything to do with that parent function. Once I know my parent function, I can make all the shifts. Okay, so looking at the parent function of f of x equals b to the x, the way this is currently written is written as a growth equation. So what I wanna do is I wanna do the growth in one color just so you can see it, and then let's change it up just a little bit to represent decay better. We said yesterday that if we plug in negative one, this would be one over b, zero would be one, one would be b, and two would be b squared. So if I'm dealing with growth, we'll just call this b. I don't really know where b is. Um, negative 1 and 1. I said those backwards. but So 1 over b, we'll call it maybe somewhere here. 0, 1. I'm going to call it 1 over b right here. 0, 1. We'll call this 1. 1, b. And then 2 would be up further, and we have this graph that looks like this. Okay. That's my growth. Well, let's look at this in a different light. Let's look at this function rather as f of x equals one over b to the x. We'll assume b is a positive number. So one over b to the x would be that fraction. It would represent decay. When I go and make a table of values now, if I do a fraction raised to a negative exponent. So I do negative one, and I raise one over b to the negative one. I'm gonna come over here, one over b raised to the negative one. Well, remember a negative exponent flips, the, right? It's a reciprocal, so this would actually be b over one to the positive one. So negative one in my decay is gonna be b. Zero is still going to be one because one over b to the zero is still one. One, now, if I go one over b to the first, it's just going to be one over b because one over um, anything to the first power is itself. And then if I plugged in two, this would be one over b squared. So what it looks like is a little bit different. At negative one, we're at b. 0, we're still at 1, 1, we're at 1 over b, and then we get even lower. What you can see here is my decay function really is a reflection across the line 
um, x equals 0. That vertical line or the y-axis, x equals 0. So the good news is my domain and my range, they haven't changed. My domain of my parent function is still all reals. The range of my parent function right now is still y is greater than 0. Not equal to 0. There's no way I can raise a power to a number and get 0. Can't do it. So my domain is all reals, and my range is y is greater than 0. Okay, so here's my parent function. I'm actually going to go ahead and erase this growth function for just a moment, just so we don't get confused. So we're going to go ahead and erase this. So my decay function is the function negative 1 is b, 0 is 1, 1 is 1 over b, and then 2 would be 1 over b squared. So let's look at what that looks like in a, pro a couple problems. You'll notice this problem looks pretty similar. The only thing that's changed is that decay rate. What you should notice is that my growth rate in each of these is a half. Okay, so remember the parent function is only based on the b to the x power. And so since my b is one half, let's go through and think about what that looks like. Hopefully we get to a place where we don't have to write it down every time. But if I do b to the negative 1, let's do b is 1 half, and I do 1 half to the negative 1, it's going to flip it. It's going to make it 2 over 1. If I keep going and I plug in 0, 1 half to the 0 power is still 1. 1 um, half, 1 half to the positive 1 power is 1 half. So if I look at my exponential growth model here, negative 1 is 2. This is going to be a tiny little graph. 0 is 1, 1 is 1 half. And I have a graph that looks like this. My domain in this graph, all reals. My range, y is greater than 0. All right, let's try another one. What happens when I multiply by 3? Well, I'm going to start with the idea that this is going to be 2, 1, 1 half, because that's the parent function. But then remember, I'm going to multiply each of my y values by 3. So when I multiply 2 by 3, I get 6. So negative 1 is 6. 0 is 3. And 1 is 3 halves, so that's 1 and a half. But my graph hasn't been shifted up or down any. It's just been stretched. So this is a stretch by a factor of 3. Did my domain and range change? No. My domain is still all reals. My range is still y is greater than 0. Okay. Hit pause. See if you can graph the next two. See if you can use their function transformations to graph the next two. Okay, so first thing that I would do anytime I look at this graph is first I would say whether it's growth or decay because that'll help me visualize my parent function. We've already indicated that this is going to be a decay function. So we know it's decay. What else is happening? Well, we can see from the three, this is going to be a stretch of three. And then we see this plus 1 up in the top. And this plus 1 is going to tell me that I need to shift my graph to the left 1. Oops, left has a T in it. Decay, stretch of 3, left 1. So let's deal with the decay part. I know that if I plug in negative 1, it would give me 2. If I plug in 0, it would give me 1. If I plug in 1, it would give me 1 half. But then I need to deal with the 3, so I'm going to multiply each of these by 3. We get 6, 3, 3 halves. If it helps you to graph that, that shape, um, that's fine. Graph it. So we go 6, negative 1 is 6, 0 is 3, and 1 is 3 halves. And so this would look like this, except now I'm going to take each of my points and shift them left one. And there's my graph. Did my domain change? 
No, it's still all reals. Did my range change? No, it's still y is greater than zero. All right, if you didn't hit pause for that one or you weren't able to graph that one, hit pause now and try the fourth one. All right, hopefully you had a chance to try this. So let's go through and discuss what changes have happened. Um, what we can see is that this is decay because our B value is one half. This has a stretch of three. And we see that from the three right here. We have a horizontal shift of left one. And we saw that from right here. Now what about this plus one? What is that gonna do? It's gonna shift the graph up one. Okay, so if we look at our parent function that we've already done, negative one is two, zero is one, one is one half, and then multiplying by that three, that a value, we get six, three, three halves. And sketching that parent function, I'm not sure why this graph all of a sudden looks blurry. Sketching that parent function, we get a graph that looks like this. And then I'm going to shift it left one, up one. And I can do those at the same time. Left one, up one. Left one, up one. Left one, up one. Still puts me in half. But what else shifted up one? Well, that horizontal asymptote that we had, this line, this imaginary line that I couldn't cross, now also is shifted up one. So since I can now, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Since I can now shift that horizontal line up one, I'm gonna sketch my graph and instead, what is that gonna change? Well, it's not gonna change my domain, which is still all reals, but it is gonna change my range, which now is y is greater than one. It is shifted up one. How'd you do? Okay, let's move on to the idea of word problems. So let's look at the idea of modeling exponential decay. So remember our general form for an exponential equation is y equals a times b to the x, where a is our initial value and b is our rate of growth or decay. So when we're modeling exponential decay, very similar to modeling exponential growth, we're gonna do y equals a times one minus r to the t. So this value right here, this one minus r, is our b value. What we're doing is we're calculating our decay, our rate of decay, by using our percent of decay in the equation. So nothing has changed. A is still my initial value. Whoops. A is still my initial value. That whole green area is my decay rate, but my R value that's in here is my percent of decay as a decimal and T is time. So let's look at a very common example for modeling exponential decay. You purchase a $25,000 car. The value of the car decreases 3% per year. Another name for decreases that you might hear, you might hear the word depreciate. To depreciate means you go down in value. Appreciate means to go up in value. Depreciate, go down in value. So the value of the car decreases 3% per year. So seeing the fact that it says decreases or depreciates tells me it's a decay problem. Then it says, how much is the car worth in five years? Okay, so we are going to set up our equation. We're gonna say y equals our initial value. It's what we start with, 25,000 times one minus my percent of decay as a decimal is 0 0.03 to the t power. This is the model for this particular problem. It's a wise idea to always write the model. And then we can go and answer the question. 
because the question says, how much is the car worth in five years? So that five years is going to be my T. So Y equals 25,000 times one minus 0 0.03 to the five power. And you can type it in your calculator just like this. So when I do that and I type 25,000, oops, let's do that, 25,000 times one minus 0 0.03 to the fifth power, we get that this particular car is worth $21,468.35 in five years. Now, truthfully, most cars' depreciation rates are high, far higher than 3%. Um, you couldn't sell a car five years later at 21000 Maybe if you didn't drive it any miles. But anyway, let's look at another example going with the same one. So using that same example as above, the $25,000 car that depreciates at 3% per year, when will the car be worth less than $10,000? So this time I'm asking for a when. I know the amount it depreciates to. So I'm trying to figure out when 10,000 equals 25,000 times one minus 0 0.03 to the T power. I'm trying to figure out when. How do I solve this? What do I do if my variable is an exponent? Well, right now, the only thing we can do is use our graphing calculator. So in our graphing calculator, we're going to go into our Y equals menu. And I'm going to insert a video here that you can watch that will go over this. To find the answer to this problem, since we can't do it algebraically just yet, I'm going to go into Y equals and I'm going to type in my equation. So my equation is going to be 25,000 times one minus 0 0.03 to the X power. And then I'm gonna also type in 10,000 because my goal is to figure out when it reaches 10,000. And then I'm gonna graph. Now I'm gonna change my window and I'm gonna change my X max to be, I don't know, let's do 10 years and see if that's enough. My Y max needs to go up to at least 10,000. It'd be better to go up to 25,000 so we can see the whole graph. And that should be good. So I'm going to hit graph. Oops, I have some data in there. Ooh, that doesn't go down very quickly. Okay, so 10 years is very clearly not enough. So let's go change our X max to be longer. We need it to go out further. So I'm going to change this. Let's do 25. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna turn off my stat plot. Let's just turn that off. And now hit graph. Oh, still not there. Okay, so let's change our window one more time. Oops, to 30. Surely it's gotta be close to 30. Graph it. And my job is to find where they intersect to find that place where they intersect. And I'm gonna go up to 35, darn it, so I can see the whole thing. Now, if you recall, if I wanna find where they intersect, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna click second, calculate, and I'm going to choose number five, the intersect. And I'm going to get as close to the intersection as possible with the first curve, see how it says first curve, move my cursor to that intersection point, and I'm gonna hit enter. And it says second curve, usually your cursor is pretty darn close, so just hit enter, and guess, hit enter again. And now it gives me my intersection is 30.08 when y is 10,000. So what we know is that the time it would take to reach 10,000 is 30.08 years. And that's how you use a graphing calculator to be able to answer these questions. All right, you guys, that's all I have for you today. Have a good day.